right now, though, I want to welcome to the program from Freedom to Choose Pack in Illinois. Josh Powell is with us. Josh, how are you, sir? I'm great, Cam. How are you doing? Fantastic. Uh, glad you can be with us today and uh, to talk about everything that's going on uh, in the uh, state of Illinois and in the Chicagoland area where, you know, there's I, there, 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 there's some relief on the way, Josh. We've got right to carry coming. We had the uh, Illinois Supreme Court decision that uh, – uh, concurred with the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, but we still have a lot of politicians who are um, hmm, they're more interested, Josh, in uh, going after law-abiding individuals. They're more interested in, I think, making headlines and offering what I call soundbite solutions than offering um, real steps that can end the violence or, or at least stop some of the violence from taking place in Chicago. Well, I, I think that's that's absolutely right, Cam, and I think that I think to a large degree, it is a extremely overwhelming crisis, and and obviously they're gonna, you know, push push the wrong way on this. They're they're trying to figure out what buttons to push. You know, recently the governor talked about bringing in the state police down there, potentially bringing in the national guard, and and I think what people are kind of missing at the end of the day is that this is it. You know, Chicago has surpassed Miami in terms of its its importance to the drug cartels. It is now the number one hub in this country for bringing drugs into this country. And what you have going on here is you have a full war happening in the streets of Chicago. And you're, you're dealing with a police force that's undergunned, outmanned, and underfunded. And they're, they're trying to grasp its straws here. Oddly enough, I, I still don't understand why we can't get these guys prosecuted under the federal the, the federal sentencing guidelines, which is very odd to me. It's like the federal prosecutor is nowhere to be found. The cops are trying to, you know, the, the chief of police is looking for stronger mandatory sentencing from the state, which they absolutely should pass, and I can't figure out why they don't. But it's a you have a lot of things converging in one spot, Chicago, and, and there, there there's there's it's a crisis there, and people are crying out for help. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, you talk about the lack of federal prosecution for uh, a period of time going back uh, and continuing at least through the first of this year. Uh, Chicago had the fewest gun related prosecutions of any of the federal districts uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, in the in the DOJ system, in the U.S. attorney system. Um, and again, that's just sort of astounding given the amount of violence, gang related violence uh, in, in the city of Chicago in cases that could be referred uh, and uh, prosecuted by the U.S. Attorney's Office, has it gotten any better, Josh? I, I don't. I, I'm not aware that it's getting any better. And, and 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 I guess where I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing the connection between the mayor's office and the chief of police in working with the federal prosecutor. And you don't hear them talk about it. What you hear a lot is them blaming Springfield in terms of that we don't have stronger state level mandatory sentences which I understand and I and I and I and I get that. I don't understand why they wouldn't stand out there like Elliot Ness and say with the federal prosecutor, we are going to prosecute you under the federal law and stand up and down. Nobody seems to to we've talked about this multiple times that nobody seems to care that Chicago ranks last in this country in prosecuting federal gun crime. And I don't understand it. It's mind boggling. No, it is, but you know, look. This is why I say uh, politicians often want to offer soundbite solutions. Mayor Rahm Emanuel will say, "Hey, look, we've got these safe passage zones, uh, Josh, that we're going to expand. You know, so that uh, kids can know they can walk to school safely in Chicago." I saw a story a couple of weeks ago from uh, Channel Seven in Chicago, headline: "Gang War Rages in Safe Passage Zone." Whoa! It's bizarre, isn't it? It, it? The fact that that is even acceptable that we can have a conversation that we're creating safe passages for children is it, it, it really shows you the level of violence that's in that city. They literally have corridors where children can go to school and not get attacked yep. across dot and crossfire. It's, it is, it is an epidemic. It is an absolutely huge problem. And, and they're really not addressing what I don't understand is, is like I said, it, it, when you really look deeper into this, you don't hear a lot of people. You hear people talking about guns, safe zones, you know, even prosecution. You know, guys like me talking about federal prosecution. But nobody's really diving in there and saying, what is the source of this? 
And the source of this is the fact that you've got two major Mexican drug cartels in there that are at war, and it's about money. It's about money and power and drugs. And this, and Chicago now is the hub in this country for logis- logistical distribution of, of drugs. Well, we know how law-abiding the Mexican drug cartels are, Josh, so I'm sure another gun control ordinance will uh, put a stop to all this, right? <laughs> Listen, Josh, appreciate you coming on the program, man. It's good talking to you, and uh, let's do it again very soon. That's, that's great. Thanks a lot, Cam. Keep it up. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, sir. Josh Powell joins us from the uh, Freedom to Choose Pack.